Hey everyone, Fuseman coming at ya. So in our previous video, we took a look at integrating Unity and, and Ethereum together so that you can start to send Ethereum transactions over the blockchain. But from a practical standpoint, you had to give up your private key to the application and it was kind of a little bit messy in that regard. So the next kind of step that you would take from there is to use Unity and Ethereum. And in our case, we're gonna be using WebGL to handle sending and signing transactions for us. The way this will work is because you're using WebGL, you'll have access to the web wallets that are provided such as Metamax, which I personally use. And in doing so, MetaMask will go ahead and handle that sending and signing of transactions for you. And all you need to do is pass it what you want to happen. It handles it for you, sends back the transaction hash. You can listen to that. And in that sense, I think it's a, it's a really secure and seamless way to actually integrate Unity and WebGL together. And as you might suspect also, this is also a pretty good way to integrate WebXR with Ethereum as well. And then you can start building VR AR applications with the blockchain. And I think that's incredibly powerful. So real quick, before we dive into the project overview here, I'd love to know down in the comments below, what are the things that you're kind of interested in, in terms of learning more about Ethereum? And what else would you like to see kind of built off of this? Because I think there, there's so many different paths that you can go with integrating Unity and Ethereum together that I think it makes it really, really powerful for, for game developers. So curious to know what those thoughts are down in the comments below and let's, let's get those discussions started. And without further ado, let's go ahead and dive over into the project itself. As I mentioned, this is based off of the Unity and Ethereum project. And more specifically for getting MetaMask to work, they have a project here based around getting a very simple flappy word example working. And you can you can read more about that here. I'll make sure to leave a link to that in the description for you to check out. But um, this project was actually only updated in 2019. So it is a little stale. And as a result, I've actually gone ahead and basically taken that project, tweaked it a little bit and it's live here on GitHub. You can also take a look at that as well. Uh, on the main branch, we will have the code that actually integrates WebXR with MetaMask. But if you're just looking for the MetaMask only specific implementation, I've gone ahead and created a branch here. I've also tagged that on GitHub for you to take a look at. And pretty much this is just simply building off of that project, tweaking it so that it uses some updated HTML and JavaScript implementations for Ethereum. So uh, take a look at that uh, to, to go ahead and get started, but I'll go ahead now here, switch gears to actually taking a look at the project in and of itself and explaining how everything works. So pretty simple stuff here. We have the N Ethereum code that we took a look at last time. Nothing much has changed here. We still have that same canvas that allows us to uh, input in our MetaMask credentials and send and receive MetaMask and Ethereum transactions. So that's just gonna be our basis here. I mean, you could really use any scene because we're not really gonna be focusing on this too much, but I just wanted to know, this is kind of the scene that you start with. As I mentioned again, there's the Flappy Bird implementation. And one thing to note about the Flappy Bird code is that in their example, they were actually integrated with a smart contract. So if you're looking for information around that, I think that's a pretty good resource to take a look at. It's based on this smart contract here, which is just a very simple leaderboard. And to be honest, not probably the greatest implementation of a leaderboard because that's pretty hackable, but it, it is what it is, right? It's, it's, it's more of a proof of concept than, than something for practicality purposes. And then the, the rest of this is handled in JavaScript and actually you really don't even need to be looking at, at C Sharp all that much, except for, for one specific area. Because this is WebGL, we do have to make sure that you are exporting as a WebGL project. And as in a WebGL project, you need to head over to your player settings and then make sure that under your resolution and presentations, there's an Ethereum template that is provided. Make sure that one is selected here. The reason for that is because that's gonna be our interface to, to, to handle talking to MetaMask. And specifically, this is our HTML page. It is located here under your WebGL templates, under ETH templates. 
and it's the index.html file. There's most of this is pretty standard stuff. And if you've taken a look at the WebXR WebGL templates, a lot of this will probably look pretty familiar here. The core of it is really kind of two functions that trigger things off. So first you have this check MetaMask function, and then second you have a connect to MetaMask function. So our check MetaMask function is just doing some simple HTML checking that will kind of tweak the HTML based on whether or not you've been signed into MetaMask or not. And our second function here, as you might expect, connects to MetaMask and you go ahead and just call the enable function and it'll just verify that you've actually been enabling MetaMask and if so, provide the correct prompts to the user depending on do they have it, do they not have it, have they signed in, have they not signed in. So nothing too fancy going on here, which is really, really good. And of course you have your Unity container, which spins up your Unity application. You can do whatever you want in that context. The second thing that we want to take a look at is the JavaScript bridge that goes between JavaScript and C-sharp. And let me also go ahead and pull up the C-sharp code. Now this bridge is basically here as your web three JS plugin. And it's just a JavaScript file. The, the key being that you are merging the library between C sharp and JavaScript over a set of functions. In our case, we have a get account function and we have a send transaction function. Though the way you reference these within C sharp is through a DLL import. And I know that's kind of funny because we're not really dealing with DLLs here, but that's kind of the general idea is that it's an internal DLL is how Unity describes it. And using this extern uh, key, it's able to externally combine these two functions together, which is, I think is pretty, pretty awesome and pretty, pretty powerful for whatever magic Unity does behind the scenes. And uh, you just basically uh, give them the same uh, signatures so that Unity is able to match it, same function name so that Unity is able to match it. And that allows you to go ahead and call these JavaScript functions within Unity. So, in a sense, now you're running JavaScript code the second you call get account. What that means is that now we can call all of the JavaScript functions that integrate with MetaMask, and that's really, really powerful. So as you can see here for our get account, we call this window.ethereum, which is basically MetaMask, and we can find out what address has the user actually logged into. What is their public address and public key that we can use to reference our end user? We can also check does this support MetaMask? If not, maybe we don't want to interact with it. There's a couple kind of nuances here a little bit when using JavaScript and C-sharp. Those are all documented on Unity's page for how you want to handle passing data back and forth. But if you're returning data as we are in the case of getAccount, you need to set aside some buffer area that you convert that you have the JavaScript strings into a C-sharp representable code and pass that back into the context of C-sharp. So that's what's really happening here at the end. Similarly, when you're receiving string data, there's a pointer to stringify method that Unity provides to convert that garbled data and convert it back into a string. So there, there's a lot of memory passing that's happening because you're, you're switching between both these contexts here. But uh, at the same time, uh, I think that's just something you have to live with and that that's more than acceptable given how complicated things are that Unity is handling for you. Uh, similarly, we have a send transaction function, which will go ahead given, in our case, we're just taking an amount of Ethereum that we want to send, but given that amount of Ethereum, create a transaction that we pass to MetaMask. MetaMask will prompt the user to sign that transaction. Once that's signed and pushed into the blockchain, we go ahead and, well, in this case, we actually don't do anything, but you would receive a transaction hash if you wanna go ahead and listen for events from that transaction. But just for simplicity's sake here, we actually don't even need to do anything when we send the transaction. But if you want, you can set up a callback for that request and get the transaction hash and actually listen to that within the context of Unity, which we actually go ahead and do within our WebXR demo. But uh, Otherwise, as you can see here, we just get the account, what the public key, who is that coming from, how much data do we want to send. 
we need to convert this value into hex and we also need to convert it into a smaller unit of ethereum so that you can kind of send more fine-grained stuff and that's just what metamask likes but otherwise fairly straightforward as far as what we're doing here to send that transaction again that gets called from our send transaction function and this function goes ahead and gets called down below in our transfer ether coroutine. And one thing to know about WebGL is async functions do not work. You have to use coroutines within the context of WebGL because WebGL is single threaded. So uh, keep that in mind whenever you're developing for WebGL and Ethereum is that you really want to make sure that you're not using asyncs, you're using coroutines. That's the core of it. That's, that's really all there is to it. Once you have that, you uh, you don't even need a Robson URL here because we're handling everything through JavaScript. If you want to do that back and forth, like I mentioned before with WebXR, that is where you will, you'll definitely want to have that bridge between an Ethereum and JavaScript. But otherwise, everything here really is just kind of that base layer of here's how you would interact with JavaScript and, and WebGL and kind of doing that back and forth dance, if you will. So that's everything you need to get started. For now, go ahead, clone the project, build and run it, and then you should be able to try it out. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, love to know what you guys thinking of the Unity and Ethereum content. If you have questions, definitely make sure to leave those down in the comments below or topics that you'd like to see covered in the future. I think one thing I personally wanna learn a lot more about is smart contracts and integrating that within the context of Unity and, and Ethereum. So I'm likely be playing around with that coming soon in the future. But uh, otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. So, it's been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.